podcast. Welcome to another episode of Over Us. Today we have a very, very special guest. Mr. Chris Smith is on the episode. Best selling author of four business books. Eric, did you know this? How many, I did. How many, how many books do you have? I have one, Commission <laughs> Impossible oh. Rogue Agent. I sold three copies. <laughs> okay, sweet. But the newest one is the conversion code. Fellas, stop chasing leads and start attracting clients. And that is out now. If you're watching, uh, Eric has it in front of him. Chris, thank you so much for being on. Thank you. I love what you guys do. I'm excited to chat. And, uh, you know, you strike me, Matt, as a guy that doesn't want to chase leads. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, thank, you strike- thank you. Yeah. I mean, I just can't picture you. Like I see the headset, but I can't picture you <laughs> dialing for dollars. I can't picture you, you know, me. smiling and dialing and what's happening is the thesis of the book that is people are now chasing you guys, which is really where you want to be, but it is sort of a paradigm shift when it comes to marketing to do that. Absolutely. No, I agree. And you hit the nail on the head there. I do not chase leads. Mm-hmm. I don't chase anything. Okay. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> right. Um, Chris, how, how'd you get here? Why, why are you writing all these books, helping all these agents out? Mm-hmm. What's your story? I'm basically the broke age in a decade early before everything really even took off. But instead of being memes and comedy, like you guys do, it was just tech tips. And, you know, like when I was doing Inman, it was the top 10 mobile apps for agents. It was WTF is Twitter. It was the best Google uh, Gmail tips. You know, it was sort of super early days. So it was a great culture, great environment. I went all over the country uh, because of a blog called Tech Savvy Agent. You know, that was it. So I worked for realtor.com, but at night, because I traveled as a traveling salesman selling CRM, if you guys probably don't even remember Top Producer. Which yeah, we, we, yeah, we talked. No, we, we remember. There are arch nemesis, actually. We were, okay. my, my uh, brokerage was on Top Producer mm-hmm. at Nest Seekers, and I was there for two months before they offed me in 2015. Mm-hmm. We were on Top Producer. Well, top producer for me is the internet explorer of yeah. CRMs. Everyone was it, on it at one point. Everybody was on it. I came in between version seven and eight, and version eight was 8i, and I was internet. So that's sort of where I started. And people were pissed, man. They were so mad that version seven changed. It looked different. They couldn't understand the idea of multiple tabs. They, they hated it. So I had to go teach these classes. Everybody was pissed off because they couldn't afford their $30 a month database. And I had to upsell $100 a month, $200 a month stuff at the end of the appointment. So I just very quickly learned that like, if people can't use what you've already sold them, you can't sell them more stuff. So I got to go in with like helping them get it set up, helping them use it, give them ideas to turn the corner. Don't just sell a market snapshot, show them exactly how to set it up, help them get one out the door to their database let their past clients say, wow, that's really cool. And then my job is done. And so I just went beyond the tool I sold because I liked YouTube and Facebook. And so, yeah, I built a business. I kind of took the leverage from Inman and I worked for Dotloop. You know, I was a part of that acquisition, 108 million, which was super cool. Uh, Wrote a book called People Work with Austin Allison. He's a genius. If people don't know Austin, he is the CEO of Picasso, co-founded that with Spencer from Zillow. He is one of the best young CEOs on the planet. He was on the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine. Like, he's just legit. And he wrote a book about business principles that put people first, factoring in technologies not going away. And that was a great experience. And I finally was like, well, I want my own company. I didn't get a lot of that 108 million. He got most of it. The investors got it. You know, I got a nice check, but, you know, I was like, I want to do my own thing. So I started Curator. My company now is, you know, we made the ink list. We do 10 figures in annual recurring revenue. Uh, You know, we have great growth, great customers. And it's sort of like HubSpot for real estate. If I had to give it a one sentence where you got Boomtown and you got Sync and you got Ylopo and Real Geeks. And there's sort of this list of platforms that were built around IDX and listing alerts and so we were like, well, let's do seller stuff and content marketing. And, it, and that attracted people to us that, you know, didn't really want to do the set it and forget it, put them on an alert. You know, they really wanted to do more marketing, branding, things of that nature. So that's what led me here, man. And I just documented my journey. 
uh, I have created content since basically people started and I just graduated on to books. You know, I used to joke, no one ever asked me to sign my blog. They right. always asked me to sign my book. So for me, that was just trying to level up and I, I love it. I love doing the research. I love writing it. I love speaking about it at events and teaching it. It's, it's really fun for me. Um, and that's, you know, what led me to what we're going to talk about today, which is just sort of the art and science of lead conversion. Cause it's, it's pretty complicated. If How the hell really... do you know what we're going to talk about today? <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, we're, this is, about. we're going to talk is, about yeah. our ship. This is our yeah. ship. Yeah, yes. exactly. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're it's not the water cooler, but let me, let me sum all that up for a second. Because <laughs> okay, okay. Brad Inman, <laughs> Brad Inman, who you guys know, you yes. know, we have now we're at BAM and, and I think you guys are that bar stool to their ESPN. I love what you guys are doing. And in like 2011, Brad called us the coolest guys in real estate. And we use that shit everywhere, put in all our ads, everything. Coolest guys in real estate, Chris and Jimmy. And I want to pass that mantra to you guys. I really feel that way. You guys are the coolest guys in real estate right now. And I mean that. It's an honor. I really do oh, mean wow. that. Yeah. I Thank appreciate you. We're, that. We're going to be using that now. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> did you, on this episode, the you just passed the, pass the torch to us. That's yeah. this is breaking news. I'm really passing the torch. Yes. But I, I just, I really feel that way. And Brad is a mentor of mine and I worked at Inman. I respect Inman. I spoke at Inman just like you just did. I toured the country with Inman, made great relationships there, but the world has changed and there are new opportunities for lots of different types of media companies. And so I'm, I'm rooting for you guys. Well, thank you. Thank we you. appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And we are the coolest guys in real estate, we think. Yeah. I mean, just look at us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> look at, zoom this, in look at that. Did not say the sexiest right guys here. in real estate. Yeah. yeah. We didn't say sexiest. <laughs> we said coolest. Coolest. Exactly. Um, Eric, go for it. I know yeah. you're just chomping at the bits. I am bit. chomping at the bits because Matt and I talk nonstop about gaining audiences, getting more engagement, getting more followers on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is. That's all we talk about, all we think about. But we don't talk too much about getting conversions. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about converting those to actual leads. And you wrote, I heard someone call it the Bible. I'll call it the Torah of mm -hmm. conversions, the conversion code. So you came out with the first conversion code when? Uh, the first conversion code was 2016. So six 2016. years. 2016. Okay. Yeah. And then you wrote an updated one six years later. So why the need to write this updated book? Well, I think basically the, the, the world changed in those six years, TikTok didn't exist. Reels didn't exist. So there was that sort of technology was still going up into the right. Uh, and, but then at the same time, there was all these new kind of like you guys saw when HUD and Facebook went to court and the next day, cause you guys probably get flagged for being like a real estate account. So they probably ban your ads every time you try to run one. Yeah. We have to review yeah. every single time, every single time auto review. And yep. so we get that a lot too. And so it's just like, you know, those filters, when you have to kind of go through the like real estate agent allowed filters, there's like five of them. It's like training wheels for ads. So that was a, one of the first big changes, but then it was like, oh, now there's a little pop-up that says, do you want to allow cookies? And many, many people do not do that. And now my phone says, do you want this app to track you or not? You guys should see the commercials right now with Apple. The commercial right now, last night, was who wants to buy this lady's email address? Who wants to buy this person's data? Like they're clowning on people auctioning it off and they're saying Apple's the privacy company. Google's whole ad campaign for Chrome is about safety, security, privacy. So that is the other thing, Eric, that changed. So a little bit of platform, a little bit of tactic stuff that changed, but this sort of consumer empowerment. I want to be able to control my data. I don't want sleazy marketers knowing everything I do on the internet just because I read their blog one time. That is a big change. And that's sort of where I feel like, okay, people need to really get serious now because the spam and the robocalls and the, the, you know, that stuff is annoying and people hate it. If It's a visceral reaction when you ask people about that. And if you ask real estate agents about that type of stuff, they hate it too. But then it's sort of like, yeah, but that's our day job. Yeah. I thought you were going to, I thought you were going to like really I, jump in with, 
I'm just saying, like, we do what we hate. <laughs> we just, all we say is yup to that. Yeah, I'm just like, we do. We, 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 no, answer. we do. All right, cool. I, thought, I thought there was like, yeah. I thought it was a comma, not a period. I, I did. So, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was pausing for dramatic effect, Matt. Okay, Damn it. <laughs> it was, I ruined it. It was dramatic and very It effective. was very dramatic. Okay, well, so I, I want you to walk us through each platform, Chris, if you can. We probably won't get through all of them. Well, hold on, hold on, hold okay, on, hold okay, on. Okay, yeah. okay. Chris, before Jeez. we get into walking through each platform, we're going to be here all, all day at this <laughs> yeah. point if we do I was that. Choose six. Let's, I haven't jog, been let's jog through but them. But when, yeah, yeah. when someone buys a conversion code, okay, mm -hmm. what, are, what are we getting here? Are we getting a, a playbook? Are we getting pretty much mm -hmm. this is what you need to do to – convert these leads um, mm -hmm. on different platforms. Mm -hmm. what I would getting? say it's a little bit of an encyclopedia or a textbook about marketing, follow-up and sales. So it's, you know, section one, digital marketing, how to generate high quality leads. Section two, what are the follow-up products, people, processes that get the most leads as possible to become an appointment? And then part three is inside sales, which is where a lot of these conversations happen, either Zoom or on the phone. And, and sort of what do you say when they do finally pick up, but then they say, I just want to talk to the listing agent <laughs> or I just want to have the home still for sale. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not serious yet. Th those are, that's also a big part of it. So what you're getting when you get the conversion code, is you're getting someone that's being realistic about the fact that you need both to be very good to kind of crack the code. And many people like you, Matt, lean towards one side or the other. They've either got a boiler room mindset or a whiteboard mindset. And so I'm just arguing that, man, if you can get both, it's really cool. And the companies that dial it in, more revenue, better sales conversion rates, lead conversion rates, capture rates, referrals, retention, everything gets better when those two departments are working in harmony and sales and marketing typically hate each other. There's different skill sets. There's different KPIs. They don't even sit in the same room. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so that's sort of what I'm, that's sort of the promise of if you buy the book is I'm going to show you how to do both of those in a way that connects the dots all the way from left to right, uh, kind of an A through Z for marketing and sales. So you heard it here first, folks. Chris has said, I have one of them. I need both of them. So I do actually need to That's purchase the conversion this. code. <laughs> well, I do you need know, to read it. You may need to hire someone that loves that part as much as you love your part. Right. Yeah. Sure. And I think that's a big, yeah. I think a lot of people don't look further into what you just said there. Um, they try and be a jack of all trades when you can hire someone who is good at that specific thing. And because a lot of people see it as spending money, spending money, but they don't see it as investing money. Mm -hmm. to hire the right people around them. So how do you tell the agent on the other side from Matt, the kind of older agent mm -hmm. that is making so much money with just referrals? They've been in the game for 30, 40 years. They're buying Zillow leads and they're thinking of branding as just a hassle. They're like, I don't want to get on Instagram, TikTok, mm -hmm. Facebook. What do you tell that agent? No problem. <laughs> I don't care. That's fine. I think that's 100% fine. Now, I would go deep on to sort of how much longer they plan to be in business, what type of a financial position are they in to retire, because real estate makes that a little trickier than other professions. And if so if they tell me they got 24 months left, I'm going to tell them to make fun of all this stupid shit yeah. and reminisce about the good old days. If they got like four years or six years or 10 years left, I'm going to tell them that they need a Matt, they need an Eric, they need a Chris on their team. They need to respect their youngers versus the respect your elders. And they need to bring in these people that are digital natives, that love social, that love content creation. And the same way a lot of realtors, they don't want to outsource, like they don't want to admin. They don't like, you know, they won't do it as good as me. Well, they probably feel the same way about the public facing marketing that happens for their brand, right? Like, I work with a uh, Joyce and Elena, lucky to live here. They're in Long Island. They're great. Boutique brokerage, Compass, all these people banging down their door, always trying to get them. The, the life in the five harbors is, is sort of what they cover. And when you look at them, like they do, they're quite frankly, rich. <laughs> okay. They spend most of their time doing fun social shit. They've been in the business a long time. But they brought in Ashley. Meet Ashley, the fucking millennial, 
that actually loves TikTok, that knows what the trends are, that doesn't think it's stupid, that can't actually stop using it. And so they were willing to say, Ashley, do your thing. And that is hard for a lot of people to do. It's hard for me to do. But the people that are going to be willing to sort of, hey, I, I don't like all this stuff. Most of them, Matt, they tell me it's important. Or Eric, it was your question. They tell me, I know it matters. It's just not for me. Well, yeah. if it's not for you, it is for someone else. Go to Upwork. Get yeah. Ashley the millennial. That's almost, yeah. it almost sounds too cliche that that person. Ashley, and I it's like perfect. actually like doing like a skit, like uh, one of those 70s sitcoms. And you can be like, Ashley, the fucking millennial. Yeah. And then yeah. yeah. runs in and starts, pulls out a <laughs> ring light and starts doing TikTok dances. Exactly. Yeah. All right, Matt, can, can we run through some of the platforms? Yeah, here? let's run through some yeah. platforms. First, okay. Chris, I want to know what your favorite platform is. My favorite platform is Instagram by far. I, I, I have this little part in the book where it's like, you know, TikTok is for people that think Facebook's for old people. YouTube, much better retention rate on videos than Facebook. You know, I think Instagram is sort of that place where it's right now, at least it's all ages. It's all demographics. It's got massive scale, crazy, cool, organic interaction and reach. So that is that is my favorite platform. Uh, TikTok is growing on that list because they're giving me more dopamine than anybody else. Yep. They're, they're giving me 100x views to followers uh, or Instagram, maybe give me 10x or something like that. But yeah. And, and then I, I really love Twitter. I think if you want to be the smartest person in the room in the field you're in, you know, a lot of the smartest people are on Twitter investors, thought leaders. Like when I want to learn about NFTs, when I want to learn about business trends and things of that nature, I would be more of a place to learn yeah, and not necessarily a place to prospect. I would say that I have this thesis lately that if someone's not doing something now, we should all quit trying to get them to. I ain't telling anyone to use anything anymore because if you're not in 2022 and beyond, you clearly have put a line in the sand. You've proven you won't work out, right? You've proven you're not going to go to the gym every day. You're not going to be on Twitter. I work with an agent, Veronica Figueroa. She is not going to do LinkedIn. She's not doing it now. She's not doing Twitter either. She's killing it everywhere else. So my advice to her team and to her is you, you don't need to figure out how to start using any of this stuff. You need to figure out how to turn what you do do into stuff that's appropriate for that place because Veronica is a force of nature. She's creating a ton of content, but it's more stuff like this. She's not going to sit down and write out 300 words every day. So, but her team needs to recognize like, I met a guy named Eric Thomas. If you guys don't know Eric Thomas, he's amazing. Like number one motivational speaker in the world. And he said, you got to let the talent be the talent. Everybody listening right now, Eric has talent somewhere. They might be really fucking good with their Facebook profile. That's a lot of people that are going to watch this. They're good at that. Well, okay. What is the best stuff there? And how could it translate potentially to some of these other places? So my, my answer to the person that I'm trying to talk into using Twitter is that I, I really truly wouldn't talk them into it. Um, I would try to figure out a way for them to sort of do it the right way without having to spend any time on it. If that's possible, it's not always possible. But so, sorry, Eric, how do people find that thing they're good at? Because a lot of people, I guess, are good at something on Facebook mm -hmm. or Instagram, but how how do they find out? Yeah. Some people just don't know. Well, what do you think at. most real estate agents are good at, Matt? Not I'm, not platform, just what is, what is sort of the traits of a real estate agent that, that makes a good agent? Everyone stop. Matt, people want to work with the best, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, clients want to work with the best agent in the market. You want to go to the best Italian restaurant. I want to go to the best golf course. And people want to listen to the best podcast in the game, which of course is us. And agents want to use the best CRM in the business. And what is that? Matt? Well, that's right. Well, that's Boomtown, the number one user rated real estate CRM. And it's so much more than a CRM, Eric. You know that? 
Yeah. It's actually, it's all the tools and tech you need to close more deals and grow a sustainable real estate business. By the way, I went to the Boomtown Unite conference, one of the best real estate conferences I've ever been to, if not the best. So yeah, check out Boomtown and see how you can score 750 bucks in free digital advertising. Visit boomtownroy.com slash over ask. That's boomtownroy.com slash over ask. That's boomtownroy.com slash over ask. Now, folks, that's boomtownroy.com <laughs> slash right, Let's get into the episode. <laughs> communicating. Mm-hmm. So they're good at communicating. Do you think that most real estate agents are good at communicating when they do uh, social media videos? No, I do not. I think they just go straight to selling and they they skip everything else and go right to trying to sell someone something. Or it's just awkward and not like they're just bad at it. Like it's just, they're just sort of not comfortable. It's very awkward to speak into a uh, a camera. Mm-hmm. You know, the way you guys do plan stuff. And I mean, it, it, it's not easy for everybody, but I agree. Most real estate agents that I meet, if I'm in the back channel at Inman, if I'm walking around, they're all freaking good chatting it up. They know their shit. Like, so my advice to them is to, to what would Glenda Baker do? Mm-hmm. Glenda Baker found a very brick wall in front of looking at a camera. But as soon as she just sat at the table with some dude and just told war stories face to face, she's so good at that. And she's blowing up. She's at about 700 K on TikTok now. And so when I think about that, I think, man, how do real estate agents do this? How do you get belly to belly or at least zoom to zoom face to face and have those conversations that most of them are good at? And then how do you actually document that? and cut that down and put that out there. And, and I bet almost every real estate agent would get 10 times better at creating content if they stopped creating content, if they took a vertical camera right here with a mic, they shot themselves from the side, the Byron special, right? The Glenda mm-hmm. Baker special. I think they would all be better at it. Now they don't get interviewed a lot. They don't, you know, this is not something they have an opportunity to do as much. They don't do podcasts as often, but set up a call, you know, set up a call with a past client and ask them what, what they thought of the work that you did or set up a call, like say, Hey, I'm going to record this call. And then somebody says, why should you work with us? Well, here's the deal. I I work with a lady named Callie Dalton for a long time. She's the best listing agent in Virginia. She's amazing. If she comes in your living room, you're signing anything she wants you to. I said, Hey, Callie, why don't you do a live stream with us and teach people how to sell? It wasn't right for her. It wasn't that format wasn't right for her. People were being mean in the comments. Oh, I can't believe she's successful. She's more successful than everyone on the call, but this wasn't natural. And I think that's okay. I think it's very unnatural. Like I, I think it's weird to just have lights in my office. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, an important point you made about, you know, putting the camera there and actually like practicing basically is really important because, you know, Matt, in your early videos, you sucked, right? You've shown that you've shown that video of yourself. I'm not saying your skit videos, obviously they're incredible, but you know, your early videos as a real estate agent suck. My early interviews as the broke agent podcasting, I was nervous. I was rambling. I was bumbling. I was all over the place. I never wanted to speak in public. I hated doing any camera work. The second that thing turned on, I would literally turn into a mute and just change into a different person. And this is, you know, over seven years, I've gotten like slightly better. I still think I could use a ton of work on this. Mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, agents need to understand, like if you hire someone to do that video or to bulk shoot or something, even Byron said this to me, the Mm -hmm. first time he did it was not nearly as good as the second or third time he did it. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it does take conditioning, but Going back to one thing you said, Chris, about like not forcing agents into a lane they don't want to be in necessarily. Mm -hmm. Video Mm -hmm. is a necessity, is it not? I think it is. I think, you know, you hear Tom Ferry say it a lot. So it must be true. You know, he's smart. He's rich. He knows what he's doing. He coaches all the top agents. But I almost put that in the same bucket that we just covered. Like, they've probably heard somebody else say that. And they probably went to a conference and took a note that said that they should do that. And then they probably watched you guys tell them they should do it and they're still not doing it. So I would say if you were, if you were to say, I'm going to push through and do one thing, like I'm, I'm not going to do email marketing. I'm not going to be a blogger. I ain't doing Twitter. I ain't doing 
you know, any of that stuff, if you're going to do one thing, you should try to do video. I, I do think so. But what I think is interesting too is people are making the property the star, not themselves. I'm sure you guys know Brad McCollum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We so, had him on. He's great. Yeah. Like if if all of your videos, Matt, were about a listing, you know, and this guy's like number one in Calgary in the luxury market in like 24 months because of YouTube, mm -hmm. you know? And so – I do think there's also a way, and if you guys have ever seen Tim Smith's stuff, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Tim Smith's films, some of them are a little controversial. They're great. And so, and he's not in them. See what I'm saying? The, the house is the star. Or, of course, the community, the neighborhood, the farmer's market. You can do that stuff too. But if you're not doing personal brand videos, it's actually probably a little bit easier to outsource listing videos that are amazing that tell stories i love those types of videos so you have sort of the tim smith where he's not in it at all you know and you have the brad mccollum where he's in it but clearly the star of the video is the house so I, yeah i would say video is critical absolutely uh if people are on the internet all day watching videos you need to be putting out videos yeah. And to your point, Chris, what you were saying, like people kind of freeze up once the camera does turn on. Mm -hmm. There's many ways to, you know, you have a team meeting once a week or once a month. Why don't you bring a, a videographer out and mm -hmm. just talk to your team and have someone fly on the wall, bring a videographer to a conference you go to and have those conversations, just kind of have them again, fly on the wall type thing. So you don't even know the, the camera's there. Mm -hmm. That's a ton of content you can get um, in your natural state that you could have weeks and months and years of content depending on how much you shoot and how much you get edited yeah and by the way people like that environment they like to see that raw footage from inside the actual sales meeting i i hate to use veronica again but she went to puerto rico and did an off-site with her team and they documented it and it got heated and i was really proud of her for airing that it can't it was towards the end of the video it was like a longer video but she didn't cut the footage where the people said you're flying all over and we got no leadership right now. We need you. She didn't cut the part where they said, we're confused about what the purpose of the company is right now. You know, th so that to me is way better than sort of, let's make sure everything looks great. Okay. You know, action. Yep. People you know? like raw. That's why yeah. the, those selling sunset shows as kind of fabricated as they are, they want that controversy. And if you can show real controversy and kind of like I always say, be a little, a lot of people call me polarizing. I don't think, I don't see that as a disadvantage. I see that as an advantage. Definitely. Yeah. The, the Gary V style videos too, where they're filming him within a meeting in his office and it's the fly on the wall strategy. I think that works perfectly. Um, Chris, I want to shift real quick to blogs. I know blogs could bore some people, but as mm -hmm. the broke agent media, this is, kind of our bloodline, one of our you know major focuses on top of the shows. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's kind of wasted time to for either agents or myself or BAM to be spending so much time on blogs today? Well, I would ask you to start. Why do you feel the need to have one? You guys kill it on Insta. You're on the spokes. You know, you did that for a very long time. W what do you think the upside is? I'll tell you, I love blogs. I love writing them. I love the process of informing people about whether it's Instagram strategy or marketing or telling funny stories. It's a so much longer form content than I could do on Instagram with just a meme or a quick little reel or video. Mm -hmm. This ebook we just came out with, I loved writing it. I love putting in images. I love making it funny. I love surprising them within like long text. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking is, am I wasting my time here? Are people reading these? Because I myself, I'm not consuming as many blogs. I just really enjoy writing them. Yeah. Well, I think number one, that is an upside on its own is the, the homework that you're doing, the research that you're doing, the insights that you're garnering, because I'm guessing those things come out in formats like this, you know, quite naturally, because you were going deeper. I, I think it's sort of an interesting point in time where I think that it's equally important to go deep and wide. And it's easier to go wide than deep, Right. So it's easier to have a clever tweet or a Facebook post or a, a, a you know meme or a story or a reel. You know, it's harder to sit down and and do something long form. So number one, though, way less people do be, because of that. So the, it actually 
you know, you're sort of think of it as, um, well, I'll give you an example with Amazon. There's like 7 million books on Amazon, something ridiculous. There's like 600,000 audiobooks. So if you get your book in the audiobook, you got way, way less people now that you're competing with. You're kind of like carving out that little, um, you know, niche for yourself that's not as competitive. So long form is that sort of niche. And you're right, Eric, most people don't want that all day, every day. But a lot of people are still reading great stuff. The Atlantic is killing it. You know, some of these media companies that do long form stuff, the New York Times is more profitable than ever. And you would have to categorize their stuff as long form. Um, so, you know, you don't have to be BuzzFeed. I think the benefit is if, you, if you're good at writing or if you're good on video and you can go deeper, it's almost the only way to show that you're truly an expert at what you do. So a book, an ebook, a long blog post. Th there's a guy named Dan Wordle, and we could probably link this up in the show notes. Maybe. I don't want to. Yeah, it's your show, Chris. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll do whatever you want here. <laughs> but he's in Let's Vancouver. Link it up. We'll, we'll pin it to the top. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Christmas. Can you, can, you, can I choose the Bentley ending? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Any referral links you want in here? Yes. Also? We'll throw yes. Do you want our video out of this? Is it just going to be you the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> let, let's, let's hear about Dan Wordle. Well, yeah. Dan Wordle. So, so COVID hits. Yeah. And everybody freaks out. Rightfully so. The real estate market got really good, but for that first month, it was like, oh crap, what's going to happen? So Dan writes this article called, you know, the possible impact of COVID-19 on the Vancouver, British Columbia real estate market. And when I read it, I was just so blown away. Like that moment in time, you needed that depth to kind of like get away from the ledge. You know, all this data and research and charts and graphs. And I have multiple clients in that area. I know other agents that are great there. But something clicked in my head that was like, man, if I actually know anyone moving there, I have to send them to Dan, you know? Yeah. So like, you don't just want to be funny. You know what I mean? You want to yeah. know your shit. You guys know your shit. If you guys didn't really like live and breathe the real estate industry, your stuff wouldn't land. You see what I'm saying? So you're sort of like experts at the industry and so then you can go make jokes that are awesome because you're, you are not a poser, right? So I, when I look at Dan Wordle, I'm just like, man, you can't fake that. This dude is sharp. And so I was just all over it. And I, I, so I think, you know, again, the book versus the blog, you know, now here's the beauty of this. And I did this, Eric, I spent a year sort of off the grid writing the book. I'd share a little bit of stuff on social. It took me a year. I think a blog post hard book takes like a year. So I go through it, but do you know how much micro content spins out of a book? Like the last conversion code was still selling really good five years later. I was still getting invited to do speeches. I was still getting interviewed. There were still international editions being requested. So I actually think that there's a way to sort of do what you love, which is go really deep. And then obviously spinning things out of that depth is fairly easy. Um, so that's my preferred approach too. It, it, you know, I think that the time you put in and there's research around if you research the keywords, if you actually take the time uh, to, to put the work into writing the article and you're thoughtful about it, it does way better. Um, but I would encourage anybody that feels the need to go deep to do it because so few people will. That's probably the number one reason too it creates such a more intimate relationship with your audience. Like you said, with Dan Wordle, when, you know, this ebook we came out with yesterday, which was just your Instagram post prescription, how often you should post when you should post, how often you should post the stories, that type of thing. It's a 12 page ebook. There's funny memes and pictures throughout, but it's really thoughtful and really useful. Posted it yesterday and 1500 people downloaded it in less than 24 hours now. Mm -hmm. And the DMS I'm getting from this thing are so much better than the DMs that I've gotten from anything else. Just, mm -hmm. you know, th this is really helpful. Thank you. Like, it's really well worded. It's funny. Mm -hmm. And it really does make you more of an expert. I know I'm just kind of echoing what you're saying, but mm -hmm. I just, I love that type of content so much, the long mm -hmm. form, because it shows my versatility as a content creator as well. 
Mm -hmm. And it just creates more trust because it's like, okay, I just read an entire article from this guy. He's not just Mm -hmm. posting memes and doing like little skits and shit. He's like actually elaborating deeply on these Mm -hmm. marketing topics and you can expand more on jokes too. So now we're Mm -hmm. experimenting with onion style posts Mm -hmm. that are like satire about, you know, a, a uh, Keller Williams agent that didn't know how to interact with the that. client's dog. Yeah. And a lot of people share these things. One of these things got 30,000 shares, the first wow. satire piece we did. Mm-hmm. And it got posted in lab put agents. A lot of people thought it was um, real, like serious. Yeah. But it's just, you know, two paragraphs that just mm-hmm. elaborate further on a joke than you could do in a meme. Mm-hmm. So I think blogging is so important still. I mean, Matt, we just had Kirsten Jordan on it. She, she has a on our podcast. She has a fantastic blog too that made me really appreciate her more as a creator. Mm-hmm. Well, I, what I would say there is one thing I didn't think of as you went through that, I realized like long form is a lead magnet and short form isn't. So if, you know, one of your KPIs and goals as a business is to generate leads and capture leads, you know, you're going to have to do something worth registering for. And that's what you're talking yeah. about. And I've noticed that with you guys, you know, you have your uh, new new agent, uh, I don't want to mess it up, but it's like you guys have a course about like, uh, cre- what is it? Credit, extra credit. What do you guys the, call the it? Real conti- the real continuing ed. Continuing yeah. ed. Yes. yes. Yeah. A really so, original name. <laughs> <laughs> it really rolled off the tongue in the yeah. duck. But, but like what I've noticed with you guys is that when you go for the registration, you really value earning it whether that's an ebook or whether that's a course that I'm sure Matt, you probably spent, you know, dozens of hours, you know, plotting and planning and recording. So that's really one good reason to sort of go deep and spend a little bit more time is that becomes something worth registering for. Uh, and like you said, Eric, the back channel conversations become a little bit different. Um, yeah. And people enjoy consuming content differently. So mm-hmm. like, you know, what's good about doing a blog post is you're going to get different, eyes on that mm-hmm. than you would with a meme or a short form video or any short form content. So you're just broadening your audience. Mm-hmm. So the conversion code it's out now. Is it out everywhere? Where can I get this thing? Can I get this in like <laughs> Barnes and Noble chapters? Yeah. We got chapters out here. Certain, certain stores you can, but I would say, you know, Amazon is where most people check it out. It's on target.com. It's on amazon.ca. You know, it's on barnesandnoble.com. Um, the audio book is coming soon, which I'm Ooh. really excited about. That was super fun. You know, it's a, it's about eight and a half hours. Um, How long did it take you to record? Well, I went to this really cool music studio. This guy was amazing. He'd worked with some great bands and it was real professional. And it took me four separate four hour days. Oh, it's uh, not that bad. No, it wasn't. I shouldn't have stacked them back to back because it really gets your voice really gets impacted. And then there's like a day later to make up all the mistakes. They kind of block a couple hours. But I I'll tell you what, Eric, if you're and you should try this, you do like an A-B test. Fifteen hundred people downloaded your ebook and 15 of them read it. No offense. And they DM'd you and said it was awesome. I don't know about that. What the whole thing? It's a it's a twelve page ebook. It's very simple. Once okay. you start reading it, you're not going to stop. I agree with you. Not there was not a hundred percent retention on this thing, but I think yeah. I'm going to send it to you after this. Yeah, I, and I'm not. I haven't even seen it. But what I'm getting at is that, like, at least for me, the the publisher always wants the print book to come out first, and then they want a ninety day cushion before the audio book comes out. So when I've put these books out everybody gets pumped and they show it on the screen and they fuck oh, you know, you said you skimmed it. And, but then there's sort of like a lull and then the audio book comes out and I get a thousand messages, dude, your book's amazing. So I, I was just wondering, is there actually like an, almost like a new kind of content Eric for you guys, which is the audio ebook. If you know if what, you, if you would have given people both choices, which would have got more clicks that is where I was heading with that. That's a great idea. And also on Broke Agent Media, on Instagram, on BAM, I just did a post, you know, 90 second reels are out now. So you could do longer form content on Instagram reels. And I did it where I'm just talking about 90 second reels in 90 seconds. And it's one of our best performing pieces of content. I was like, wait, this could be an entire new 
video where I'm literally reading the blog out loud, out mm-hmm. loud and flashing images and posting it to social media. So I think there's definitely something post. there. An audio, audio blog post. post, exactly. So it's still <laughs> technically video, but it's not you know my face reading it. You just hear the original audio and it's flashing over pictures and it mm-hmm. did really well. So I'm pumped about it. Well, I, would, I just had a magazine. Someone just, I was in some magazine and people were legit messaging me saying, is there like an audio version <laughs> of the magazine? Of the magazine. Like yeah. I didn't want to read the three pages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's I like think they're crazy. Yeah. I think there definitely is. Um, I'll try that maybe on the next one. We're coming out with a updated Instagram hacks of 2022 next week mm-hmm. ebook. Um, but, I saw a know, company do an audio conference. I saw a company yeah. basically like do like a drop where it was like, you know, it was a conference and it was just broken up into different, you know, podcasts and it was like an audio first conference. But you guys know the value of audio. I mean, you do a ton of it. I just think that yeah. if you're going to spend time on the 12 pages, that one might be worth reading is like kind of long enough to. You know? The cool well, thing yeah, also yeah. about the ebook is you could populate links throughout. So I use that obviously as a upsell mm-hmm. lead magnet to the course, to our template platform, to Boomtown, to whatever it is. So, you know, while mm-hmm. you're reading it throughout, there's, you know, hyperlinks and then a final page that has like other stuff that you could do with broke agent media. So mm-hmm. it's a little bit easier to click through that because if you're listening to something on audio, you yeah. probably know the percentages of the amount of people that click when you're listening to a podcast and they mm-hmm. read an actual ad. How many people actually click on that? I have no idea, but I can't imagine it's more than people reading a blog. Sure. Yeah, it's tricky too. You, know, yeah. you have to almost open up the browser. Exactly. Some, half the podcast don't even have the show notes with the link accessible yeah. like right. we're going to do. Yeah. yeah, like we're going to do. <laughs> exactly. But the audio is so good because it's, I mean, people are busy. Mm-hmm. So audio, yeah. you can throw on that 12 page audio ebook in your car on your, Three you minutes. know, on the way to showings, literally. And, and then you can even have like, you know, if you want links to this, this, and this at the end of the audio book, mm-hmm. say like visit, visit, whatever. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and just mm-hmm. have it that way because yeah, people just don't have the time to sit down and read through. 12 pages and click the links and Mm -hmm. they got to carve out time for that. Yeah. You know, what would be a good test too, Eric, just brainstorming now would be you guys put stuff on podcasts, right? You guys already put out longer form audio. Why not in that say, Hey, by the way, we just created this new ebook. If you text, you know, IG to this, we'll send it to you and make that, you know, make your audio stuff. The only place you put that CTA. Yeah. You know, I think yeah, that could a be good really idea. well too. Yeah. One more one more thing I want to say about this ebook here is I've seen, I don't know, a hundred ten percent increase in clicks on an ebook than I do a blog post. And I've done blog posts with just as much, if not more value than the ebook. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure there's something in the conversion code there or something with the way the brain works where it's like, okay, I'm actually getting a free ebook and it downloads mm-hmm. straight to my inbox as opposed to just reading a public blog. Yeah, ebooks, guides, cheat sheets, quizzes, assessments, th- those things all tend to have a little bit more of an appeal. Uh, so it's sort of, yeah, you're right. It's like the content's better, but the click through is better. Right. You know, I think that's huge. And you, you know, the other thing, Eric, is when you put something out there and you call it an ebook, you probably like want it to be better than a blog post. Not to yeah. say the blog post isn't more valuable, but I know, at least for me, I feel pressure anytime it's going to be you know, something people have to download, but you guys are killing it, man. Listen, I love what you're doing. I'm not, I'm wrapping up the show. I was going to say, yeah, okay. I was going to say this motherfucker's yeah, wrapping it up spons- now. Shout out your sponsors <laughs> too while you're, while you're Yes. Up. Yes. This episode of over ask. <laughs> That's awesome. Man. No, but the thing is, listen, I'm right. Ra- this is my ship. I'm <laughs> okay, wrapping up the okay. show. You wrap it up. Everyone. Buy the conversion the conversion code. It's out now. You can also get the audio book coming out soon. Eric, uh, Eric has it there. If you're watching, if you're yeah. watching this, he's I'm read, read this the, thing tonight. This is yeah, he's read the fucking Bible testimonials now. on the back, and now he thinks he's an expert. <laughs> I am so um, pun- I've never Matt. I haven't read a book, and I joke about this since Holes. I say that consistently, <laughs> and I am book. so excited. Great book, Lewis Sancher. Yeah. I am so excited to read this book, and As I bullshit I. about that type of stuff. I do not read books. Yes. Okay. As I'm going to read this book. I am a marketing nerd. And just the first page immediately is just throwing stats at you about like mm-hmm. the amount of milliseconds. Maybe it's not the first page, but the amount of milliseconds it takes to 
for someone to make a decision on like a website landing page, like that sort of statistical information is mm -hmm. so valuable for me, so valuable for BAM and so valuable for agents. So check this book yeah, out, get it. Definitely check it out. I'm going to check it out. Eric's already got a copy. Chris, mine's probably lost in the mail, but it's no <laughs> problem. You. Uh, Chris, thanks so much for coming on the Chris Smith show. We really appreciate yes. it. <laughs> I love uh, it. Listen, every week you can tune in, subscribe on YouTube, <laughs> hit that bell. You know That's what I mean? Good. Hit the bell. <laughs> All right, there we go. There you have it. What, what more can I say? That's Chris, it. thanks so much for being on. Awesome, thanks. <laughs> Podcast.